Okay, I think uh, we're live now. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm Michael Stysen. I'm co-founder and CEO of Conversion.io. It's the platform for mobile apps monetizing with in-app subscriptions. And today we are going to talk about Apple Search Ad, some news around the platform and some tips on using this platform for a successful user acquisition. But first, let me introduce our panel of experts today. Uh, my co-host Ryan Kelly. Ryan is a mobile growth expert with extensive expertise in App Store optimization and Apple search heads who work with multiple leading user acquisition agencies. Uh, we have Simona Rubanet. Simona is a senior App Store optimization strategist at uh, Nord Security. It's the company behind NordVPN app, one of the most popular apps on the App Store currently in the top 10 apps in uh, in the ut utilities category. And I would add that VPN apps is an uh, insanely competitive environment, I think. Uh, and finally, uh, Jihan Ilter. Jihan is the head of user acquisition at ShiftUp. Uh, at ShiftUp, ShiftUp is a user acquisition agency based in San Francisco. ShiftUp has delivered over 400 million new app installs to their clients over the last year alone. And they work with the apps like Evernote, All Trails, TuneIn, uh, and some other great apps. So welcome, you three, uh, to, to the webinar. Thanks for, uh, for sharing your expertise today. So we don't have like a strict agenda today. It's more like a round table format. But I think uh, we wanted to highlight several topics and they are the new Apple search ads placements, trends in user acquisition, and whether more spending goes to Apple search ads. Some advice for apps promoting in highly competitive verticals, uh, relation between App Store optimization and search ads, and tools to use to track search ads performance accurately and be able to scale search ads effectively. Um, and of course, we'll have some time to answer the questions of our audience. So uh, make sure to post your questions using this platform. We'll try to answer all of the questions. And without further ado, let's start the discussion. Uh, there have been a lot of news recently about changes into the platform. We know that Apple is paying a lot of attention to its advertising platform. And uh, the first topic that I wanted uh, to touch upon uh, the new search ads placements. And recently, Apple hosted a private webinar on the new placements uh, for the search ads. And I know that uh, a couple of you actually attended the webinar. Uh, so, uh, Jihan or uh, Simona, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the event, what Apple discussed uh, during this private webinar. So, I believe I can start. Um... So the webinar, uh, the presentation of the new placements happened uh, recently, and they presented the uh, three new upcoming uh, placements together, again, reminding us that the search tab is here and please use it. Uh, but a part of that, they uh, covered how the placements would look like. Um, um, they didn't cover the part um, how uh, the targeting will look like, they shared some statistics uh, from Apple Store, uh, like how many people use the browse uh, uh, from the homepage because the placement is going to be there. How many people, uh, how many people scroll down on the product uh, page, like uh, Apple things. Um, they gathered some data uh, from the last year. Um, yeah, that's my uh, takeaways. You can. Uh, look, regarding the, 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 the placements, uh, right? The, yeah. the today tab and, and product page ads. Uh, it was an invite-only uh, webinar, which, which was held uh, last week. It was quite short, though. It, it took only like 10 minutes. So uh, the, regarding the high takeaways, I think uh, like there are a few things that we know so far that, they sh that the Apple team shared. Number one, the both placements today tab and product page tab will have CPT based pricing, uh, similar to search tab uh, ads. Second one, uh, you, you need to create a specific CPP custom product page within the App Store Connect. Then you will uh, send it 
to uh, Apple for review. And once it gets it, it, it gets approved, you will be able to create a, a campaign on Apple search ads and link the CPP to that campaign. So this is how the Today tab creatives will be pulled from CPP uh, that will be created on App Store Connect. This is the second, like I think, six second takeaway. Third one is like there's only a demographic targeting, uh, so not not like narrow targeting at all. And lastly, I think one my takeaway is that this will go live probably this uh, holiday season. Uh, I think those are the those are my main takeaways from the from the webinar that Apple made uh, last week. Yeah, maybe I would add that uh, the requirements for uh, custom model page uh, should uh, uh, change a little bit because before uh, for. Since I'm working for App Store Optimization Part, I'm the one setting those custom model pages. Before you, the requirement was for the screenshot to have like 50% of the whole screenshot for UI, and now, now the uh, representatives were saying that it should increase up to 60% of UI, then the limitation of amount of um, uh, uh, words in the slogans uh, should be changing uh, because of how much uh, space it takes from the screenshot. So I believe uh, Apple will be way pickier for uh, how um, how uh, those screenshots should look like since it will go through the manual review. Uh, so so uh, Apple has actually provided a lot of guidance on uh, details of how the screenshots uh, need to look like, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Got it. Uh, so what do you guys think in general about these new placements, how effective it will be uh, for, for which apps? I guess uh, it can be useful for some of the apps, but maybe even uh, bad and increase the competition for, for others. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is that those uh, Today tab and, and product page ads will be uh, suitable for like big apps which don't have that much of a profitability uh, concerns. I think that uh, today probably mostly like today tab will be very likely to be like extremely expensive in terms of CPT simply because of the fact that it doesn't have any targeting at all. It's only demographic targeting. So it's going to be super expensive. It's probably bigger apps will use that placement, like such as Uber, Google, and so on. Uh, and it's going to be mainly a brand awareness campaigns, not a, like a super performance campaign, performance marketing campaigns. It's going to be a brand branding campaigns. So uh, I think product page ads might sound a little better than today tab. Uh, if you're a if you're a, a app looking for like profitability and ROAS, uh, and to be perfectly honest with you, Apple does didn't share any information around the targeting of the product page ads. And just just to refresh your memory, the the, the ad the, the new placement will be on the product page, under you might also like section. So I think there's going to be some of the targeting because it's going to be on on one of the apps product page. I think you you might choose a category or maybe some of the apps that you want to show your ad in, but Apple didn't share any information around this. But at least I think its targeting would be more capable than the than the today tab ads. So so your expectation is that they will allow targeting either uh, based on the category or maybe even by a specific app. So you can like select yeah, a specific that's app. My, that's my personal feeling. So Apple didn't share any information around this. They were super vague around the targeting of uh, product page ads. This is my feeling. I might be wrong. We'll see. Uh, from my point of view, I'm kind of afraid that uh, competitors might use it and a lot and heavily those who, who have like lots of money and who doesn't care about, you know, positive ROAS. But today we were discussing uh, about this placement uh, with the colleagues and uh, the thought uh, arised, what, what could happen, hypothetically speaking, if uh, we are listed organically uh, on the apps you might like, and then we are buying the placement because we are not aware where we are listed as apps you might like, and then we are bidding on, on the placement. So we just were wondering how it's gonna look like. Yeah, just... 
personal uh, fears, let's say like that. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. No, it's fine. I, I, I completely agree. I think that um, as it's already been mentioned, this is going to be for a select number of companies that have apps that make uh, a lot of sense to where they appeal to a much wider audience. I, I saw a search tab ad for Grammarly today. And for me, that makes sense. Like Grammarly is an app that anybody can use. So it makes sense for them to be in that search tab. But if you have an app that's very specific and you have a very niche audience, this type of, of uh, placements are, are really not going to perform very well um, because the intent for these browse users, it's, it's going to be very, very low. And so the value of these users is, is, is really questionable. I, I do think the, um, you might also like that placement there. That's the most interesting. Um, but I think it's just an app by app um, basis that it would need to be evaluated. So I'm, I'm sort of cautiously optimistic. I do think that big brands right now, um, what we're going to see is they're going to put a lot of uh, budget towards um, towards these, these ads because uh, they have money to spend at the end of the year and, um, and they, they need to spend that money. And I think you're going to see uh, the biggest players go after all these, these new placements. And the only last thing that I'll say is um, even though I do think it's very good, it doesn't solve the problem of getting people to go to the store. So I don't know if anybody goes to the store and just casually browses the store like we used to do five or 10 years ago when, when everything was new, like we could go to the categories, we could look at the category charts. So now it's, it's like you're relying upon people going to the store and how much traffic there actually is to the store. It's not bringing more people to the store. It's just bringing the same number of people to the store and you're just trying to get like, get those eyeballs, I guess. Yeah, I agree completely. So probably it's, it, it can be as effective as like uh, targeted Instagram ads, for example, where there is like a lot, a lot of traffic and you can uh, capture new users. And uh, it, it's not the same with this like today page on the on the app store not not many people go to like browse the app store i agree with you uh so maybe uh mm, it would be interesting to, to to hear what you think on uh like allocating budgets towards apple search ads in general right so uh currently uh to my view apple search ads is one of the channels where it's relatively easy to actually measure your ROAS, like you can track pretty accurately. If you have the right tools in place, you can track pretty accurately the performance on uh, campaign level or even keyword level. And it's, it became much harder with Facebook ads, uh, with other channels after Apple introduced their privacy policies. Uh, especially when we are talking about subscription type apps, which rely heavily on subscription renewals, basically the unit economics and whether it's like positive ROAS or it's negative ROAS, it depends on how these subscribers retain within their, uh, how long they stay your paying customer, let's say. And Apple search has, it's easier to track if you have the right set of tools. So do you guys see any like shift of the budget from other channels to Apple search ads? What's, what's the situation there? You know, uh, if you're talking about the future trends uh, with all the new placements, um, I'm not quite sure about tracking how it's gonna look like, uh, keeping in mind uh, the new placements and uh, the console part. So um, I believe that for the time being uh, and with the seasonality, uh, you will stick with the search ads. Uh, well, it's it's a tough question for us because uh, here at Shift Talk we only do uh, we are we are we are specialized in Apple search ads and Google mm -hmm. app campaigns. We don't do social media uh, like Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat. So it's it's hard to say that the budget shifted towards Apple search ads uh, from like those social made social uh, uh, social paid ads. Mm -hmm. uh, but anecdotally, we are we are of course seeing a. Uh, an increase in the Apple search ads budget over the over the year, simply after the iOS 15 and all that like IDFA depreciation. 
So uh, yeah, that's why that's that's why that's that's what I think. Yeah, I I think that you pretty much as a minimum you have to be doing brand campaigns, and this even goes uh, to the the mid size and, and and some smaller size. Um, I also think that there's a lot of value in in running a lot of experiments on keywords to try and figure out um, what are the best keywords. I, I think that that the um, the platform itself is probably the best ASO tool that uh, that that we have. I mean, it's it's it, it's great. And, and then another thing that I started doing, especially when there's new um, new placements, is um, we have a budget for just testing different channels. And so this is going to be the perfect time to kind of take that budget and put it towards some of these channels and just test it out. I, I also, I, like, I don't want to be the first one, though. I, I am probably going to wait until January and... I think that that Apple's probably rushing this out for the holidays so they can make as much revenue as possible. And um, I imagine, given the history of Apple releases, that there's going to be some 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 issues. But I think that they'll, they'll eventually sort those out, and and uh, Q1 next year will be a good time to 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 run some of these experiments. By the way, you have touched upon this uh, App Store optimization thing. I think it would be super interesting to discuss how Apple search ads linked with uh, App Store optimization, how you can actually leverage uh, Apple search ads uh, to get better results in your App Store optimization and maybe vice versa. I will jump in then. Uh, I, I believe that Ryan will have the same attitude towards the ASO and ASO. So uh, I'm personally a fan of uh, Apple search ads as a supported tool for um, uh, App Store optimization, because as Ryan mentioned, it's a very nice uh, way to find new keywords or support, in my experience, to support the existing ones or at least to boost uh, the traffic to the keywords which you would be, like to rank for. Another thing is the competition, um, uh, competitors, and again, then it's brand self-defendant, I would say. Those are the three categories of the keywords I would uh, spend the money on with uh, Apple Search Ads. Uh, I, I can jump in. So I, def I totally agree with, with, with Simona. I think they are hand in hand. Uh, they feed each other. So if you want to take advantage of uh, ASO to improve your Apple search as program, so you can, what you can do is you can simply improve your uh, quality score of the keywords and tap to a rate by incorporating the keywords that you want to target into the metadata, predominantly subtitle and title. Uh, so that will support the quality score of your keywords on your Apple search ads campaigns and TTR, which will improve your performance on Apple search ads uh, through ASO. If it's the other way around, meaning that if you want to uh, take advantage of Apple search ads to improve your ASO efforts, so what, what you can do is that you can simply boost the, 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 the keywords spending and insults through Apple search ads because there is a direct correlation between the number of installs received versus the organic keyword rankings on a keyword basis, meaning that if you boost a keyword through Apple search ads, you will receive higher number of installs, which will lead you to improve your organic ranking too. This is how, how, how they are like correlated with each other. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it in my opinion. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, I, I have to agree. And I, I think that, that um, they go hand in hand, but not only that, I don't think that you can have a successful ASO without the support of, of ASA. And right. I also right. think that by targeting, like narrow your, narrowing your targeting and not trying to go for lots of different keywords, and especially those that are most competitive, I think that you could really win some, some of the smaller um, niche keywords and um, with also now custom product pages, it makes it even better. So you don't have to worry about using your default screenshots. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's that's really, um, yeah, it's a great combination. Uh, so maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more about that. So uh, do, do you suggest like to use uh, custom uh, custom product pages with different keywords? Uh, is that right? And how? What would be like the the I don't know, typical set, how many uh, different uh, product pages would you uh, propose to have? 
I'll, I'll let, I mean, I can jump in, but I, I think how Simone and Jihan both have uh, a lot more experience, but um, I just have a general rule that I, I tend to target five seed keywords. And so I assign an ad group to each one of those five seed keywords. And those five seed keywords need to make at least 10 phrases to have volume. So in other words, I'm targeting um, basically 50, 50 keywords and phrases within those five, five ad groups. I mean, that's just what I do personally. Um, similar, yeah, similar as Lauren, uh, in my case, uh, we truly support localizations because uh, for us, uh, as in our app, we are localized to like, many languages, right? many lo localizations. So uh, localizations uh, and custom product pages are easy even for, for our case. So is it uh, one of the things that we wanted to discuss uh, uh, are the like competitive strategies, right, and how to compete in the highly crowded markets? And I think VPN is uh, like ideal example of very competitive vertical. So maybe Simone, you can tell us a little bit more about how you approach this. I understand that probably you don't want to disclose too many secrets <laughs> and and uh, some stuff that really works, but maybe you can disclose some of it at least. Um, starting with having the greatest product on the market uh, would be the one of the key successes. Uh, second of all, I keep an eye, in my case, keep an eye on all the copycats which are trying to uh, win uh, the success based on our success. So if we are doing something great, um, either the similar app with a similar name might appear or Competitors might notice uh, that uh, we are doing something, we are trying new approaches, or even uh, if we are trying the new strategies with uh, uh, combining two channels as uh, ASO and ASM. And they are starting to do the same, so we need to jump off uh, the train on the right time and start a new ride with uh, new, uh, new strategies and new approaches. So the tips would be, the second one would be to be, um, always have out-of-the-box solutions and use uh, the usual channels uh, in a different um, way possible. Uh, well, I might approach uh, to your question with the UA approach uh, and maybe like specifically Apple search ads. So I think there's not there's no silver bullet here. You have to do all the best practices here to like win over your competitors. There's nothing like one thing that you should do and you will like win your competitors. Like you have to have a a really proper campaign structure on Apple search ads. And our, our best practice is to have brand campaigns where you bid on all your own brand terms for brand protection. We have generic campaign where you bid on like non-brand terms. So for example, if you're a VPN app, like VPN, IP Vanish, Masker, Hydra, IDNs, all that stuff. And you know, the, the second uh, theme is the competitors where you bid on your competitors apps they're likely to be the they they tend to be the most expensive which is which is fine but again i think uh, you should be bidding you should be bidding on your competitor to terms too and in the fourth bucket we mostly do discovery campaigns where we enable the search match feature of the apple and where we add all those keywords that we bid on as an exact match as a negative in the discovery that way there is no overlap between discovery and the other keywords in the other three campaigns, campaign groups. So yeah, I mean, uh, proper campaign structuring is really important. I think the second important thing is that you have to bid on a lot of keywords in my opinion, if you have budget for sure. We try to, we, uh, we prefer exact match and we prefer to keep so broad keyword pool. That way we cover every single keyword uh, collect data from them. It's, it's performance uh, bad. We can like pause it, but give it a shot for a lot of keywords with an exact match. Uh, that's uh, that's my answer. Jihan, maybe the natural question arises then: If you are bidding um, a lot of exact keywords, do you track uh, ROS of the campaign, or are you just treating it as a first uh, campaign and? Uh, just checking, uh, approaching the new keywords and uh, letting it go without tracking the, the return on ads. Um, we tried all of the keywords. Uh, I think, but the, the, it's worth mentioning that I think you, you have to let 
Apple and all, all that algorithm do its job for like if maybe a few weeks just to collect data. After a few weeks, we can take it one step back and monitor the spending on a keyword basis, install and whatever you are tracking, for example, post install, like let's say free trial, take a look at the free trial, uh, cost per free trial, your spending, your ROAS, all that LTV and make, make action. And I have another one. Uh, do you guys, in this case, would you suggest to track um, for branded keywords? I mean, um, share of voice for those keywords uh, among the competitors, or what would be your approach here? So, so within the competitor bucket, you're simply asking that, like, do you take a look at the share of voice and so on, right? Uh, to be perfect, honest with you, not that much. Although we are taking a look at the share of voice, we're not taking action based on share of voice data. Uh, the reason is that probably it's going to be really small, right? There are lots of apps bidding on competitor terms. And if you are a, um, if you're an app that is looking for profitability, uh, then I think the, the, the main stop, the last stop is, is ROAS, meaning that your LTV versus your uh, unit cost uh, of, that, of that user so we are we are taking action based on that criteria, not share of voice. Although we are uh, keep monitoring the share of voice for sure, especially for your brand campaigns. Yeah, I'm interested to know if you're if you're looking at uh, the keywords like at the at the keyword level and assigning a value to that based on what's what's happening. Yeah, like you said, post install. So whether that's like uh, subscription uh, starts or subscription trial start, um, because I had a group of keywords that I, I thought were, were excellent. Like they were, they were really good. And I didn't have this data. As soon as I got this data, I found out that the cost per install of those keywords, which I thought were really good, um, mm -hmm. were like a hundred dollars or in some cases, cool. even, even more than that. And so that said to me, okay, like it's not worth, like it's not worth continuing in that direction. Like I should go, but I felt a little bit bad because I wonder, like, how long had it been that way before I finally caught it? So I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just wondering, I guess, if you're also looking at these and, 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 and like, how important is it to, um, yeah, to, to assign ROAS at the keyword level? I think it's really important. For example, if, if, you're, if you were to see any uh, like the CPI data around like $100, I think it's too expensive for sure. So I would I would keep it for like a few weeks, maybe one or two weeks. Take a look at the post-install data. Um, it's most likely that, it's highly likely that it's gonna be super expensive to give them a, a hundred dollar CPI. In that case, we just, we end up pausing it. Uh, like no personal feeling regarding the keywords, although it might, they, may, they might look super like uh, solid. The performance might not uh, solid in that perspective. From a user perspective, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can add, add here that we do have uh, a tool uh, at the at conversion. Uh, we do provide this uh, in-app data on revenue, and actually our solution it combines four elements. We uh, get by getting the data from Apple Search Ads API. Mm -hmm. We are using that services framework. Uh, we are getting device level data from the SDK and we are providing the server side receipt validation to get data on subscription renewals from Apple directly. And all this allows us to get accurate revenue data on user level. So in conversion dashboard, you can see like uh, on keyword level, uh, you can see the number of impressions, you can see the cost mm -hmm. of install, but you can also see the number of trials you got number of this of the trials converted into paying customer and even uh, how much they paid you in total so you can see exactly what is your uh, ROI, ROI of the of your campaign for the selected period and we do see with some of our clients that you know some installs definitely some keywords uh, definitely have a higher cost per install but mm -hmm. they also have much higher revenue 
So uh, sometimes you can't, uh, quite often, there was, I would say, you can't just look at the cost per install and you do have to pay more for high quality installs. And this tool allows you actually to, to find those uh, high value users and scale campaigns or based on those uh, high value users. I think we've got some uh, questions inside the chat. So um, if you don't mind, Michael, I'm just going to jump in here and, and just um, ask these questions to the group here. So uh, Max is asking, what's the competitive strategies to test right now? So are there any strategies that, that, that you recommend trying or testing, especially as we head into this, this super busy holiday time? I wouldn't say it's a strategy, but uh... Keeping in mind that the holidays are coming, I would say don't overspend of Apple search ads because uh, I know that sounds uh, silly, but uh, if you but uh, if you get a lot of budget on the holidays, uh, when people are not actually like, if your product is not really related to the upcoming campaigns, just double check if it's really worth of spending. Maybe keep those money for the later on uh, when the bits uh, are smaller and then the market is not that tough and then uh, let's uh, then set up uh, Apple search ads. In this case, you would have higher opportunities, lower competition, and uh, you'll have more money to spend and it might be cheaper than doing it now because yeah. most, most likely there will be the competitors who have a lot of money and do not, do, they do not really care on the ROS or ROI or anything. So they just want the visibility. Yeah, that would be my advice. You and anecdotally from our uh, clients, uh, they shared the feedback that it's getting much more competitive closer to the year end and before the holidays because there's large companies that indeed don't, do not care on like the specific uh, ROI uh, for, of some campaigns. They just uh, spend uh, a lot of budget and it's, it's, it's getting uh, much harder to run uh, profitable user acquisition, let's say in, in December. But then it, it, it becomes easier in January, like people, uh, these this large companies, they're uh, in some relaxed mode and they're not acquiring users aggressively at the, at the start of the year. And that's the time for, for medium sized, for smaller apps to run highly targeted uh, campaigns and actually do profitable user acquisition. Yeah. My strategy, unfortunately, is not working anymore. So I started using custom product pages and doing like giant billboards across all the screenshots. So it was like one giant like billboard is the only way I can describe it. And lately it's been rejected um, and Apple's really cracking down because they want to see the app UI inside of the device frame. So I think, unfortunately, um, we're going to have to go back to the really plain, boring um, screenshots of, of like few years ago. Um, but I do think that the, the best strategy is to test like your creative, lots and lots of creative. The other thing that I was doing was using promotions and it looks like um, Apple's not allowing that either. So you, you can't say like, you know, we're at like 15% off or, you know, those, those types of uh, promotions. So they've been rejecting that. But um, yeah, while it was, it worked for a while, um, that was like the best kind of strategy, I think. Um, but yeah, definitely refresh the creative and test test like lots of creative um, and figure out what works is the better strategy. Usually you can you can outmaneuver your competitors because they're probably not going to be able to, they're, a lot of people don't iterate creative enough. And so they just sit back on their screenshots and then there's there that you can, yeah, I don't know, outmaneuver them is the only way I can describe it. So how often actually do you need to, to change creatives and uh, what, what's your process around that? For custom product pages, I will update creative every every month. So once once a month we do a, a refresh based on the, the data from the previous four weeks. I'm curious to know, like Simona, how often do you refresh creatives or if you have a, a set schedule or is it something that you just kind of do when needed? 
Uh, depends. As for a custom product pages, uh, I'm not sure when I'll hit the number of 35 uh, plus localizations. But uh, I can say that uh, I do not have a time frame. It really depends on um, when we are doing the new localization for uh, like localized campaigns or um, how um, um, how uh, we see that the campaign is going on. So we do iterate screenshots between the, maybe we're changing the first with the third and the vice versa. Um, but yeah, we do not have a schedule. We basically go on the needs uh, because we have a lot of screenshots and they are different types with different values, uh, different categories. So yeah, sometimes we even mix uh, the types of screenshots. So, yeah. And uh, Gihan, yeah, like, do you also, I know you, you uh, work with a lot of different apps and um, is there a, a set schedule that you kind of follow with, with the, your, your clients? We don't have any specific uh, like schedule set uh, either. So uh, we simply take a look at the, the performance of the CPP. First, what we do is that we test the CPP to like we're not uh, creating lots of CPPs in the first place and all testing them at once. What we do is we simply create one CPP on the first team, one team, and uh, compare, make a comparison between uh, that CPP as well as the, the, the original product page, the default image app. Take a look at the improvement in the tap to rate, impression to install rate. If it yields good results, then we can uh, move into another CPP, another team, uh, then the same cycle again. Uh, so uh, like there's no specific timing. Uh, we, we just take a look at the performance and uh, take action regarding that. So Jihan, if you have one successful uh, custom product page with let's say five working screenshots, you will leave it for a time being and we'll go with a new uh, custom product page and new screenshots, right? Yes. Aren't you afraid that the customers who are seeing your ad for the whole month will be get will get bored of the images? Because uh, some time ago I read the methodology that sometimes it's healthy to switch those screenshots because customers tend to get bored of the images they see, especially if you are targeting a really niche target audience with your ads. And yes, and for at the same time we do we switch our screenshots through our ASO efforts too. So uh, in, in the ASO vertical, we use uh, like Google's native experiment tool as well as Apple's native experiment tool P product page optimization PPO. So we did not put vertical. Actually, we have a specific schedule there, Ryan. So we try to um, update our screenshots every two to three weeks. It, it doesn't have to be a, a complete uh, makeover. We simply uh, do like iterational testing to like change the headline, make it bigger, add something uh, like social proof, change the background color, change the layout and everything, that all that stuff. So we try to do tests every two to three weeks, take a look at the results, apply it. And at the same time, we do testing on the CPP side too through Apple search ads. Uh, so sometimes those may overlap. However, they're simply, uh, I think like ASO has a, has a different uh, value. Because like well, Facebook, like every single, every single user will land on that product page, original product page. Um, but the Apple search ads will have a custom product page too. And in our case, for example, not all of our campaigns, not all of our keywords have a CPP, as I said. Uh, we, we simply do like testing and create CPPs uh, within that perspective. Okay, uh, Jenny's actually asking how often should you adjust campaigns? Um, just like while we're on the subject of, of how to manage campaigns, do you have a set uh, timeline or time frame that you make adjustments to campaigns? Well, I think it depends on your volume. So how, uh, like, uh, how many insults you, you receive? What's your main target that you want to optimize towards? It's a, is it a free trial? Is it an install? Is it a subscription? Or is it a like way down below the funnel, like with a really low number of uh, events? But for example, 
our best practice, not best practice, I would say, but again, it depends on the client to client, but we, we mostly take a look at uh, one week of data considering that we have like a huge amount of installs and, and events. We take a look at the one week of data, take a look at spending, install, and the, the post install that you want to optimize towards and make bit adjustments. Simona, I know you, you manage a lot of campaigns and lots of different localizations. So how, how do you manage all of that at, at, at scale? Is it, do you have a set schedule for, um, for management of campaigns? Um, um, we do not have a schedule. Um, we uh, simply optimize on the go, meaning that uh, obviously we have the tools to check all the things uh, like mm -hmm. performance and, uh, um, uh, but to rely on what uh, Jihan mentioned, yeah, it's a week, sometimes it's two, depending on the localization, because it is the localizations. Um, but yeah, uh, sometimes a week, sometimes it's a two. So it's because of the product nuances we have. And what, if you can mention it, I know sometimes um, not everybody wants to talk about it, but are there specific tools that you use or do you use in-house tools? Do you, you rely on a BI team? Uh, obviously we have a huge analytical team, which we're really happy uh, because they help us a lot in optimization. We know when we struggle and where we struggle and how we can optimize. But it's mostly in the in-house tools we build for ourselves. Obviously, in this case, Apple Search Ads Console is not really helpful for us, apart the keywords part. So I'll, uh, let's say, merge of tools for in-house tool to, to optimize it for the best result. Uh, we most we mostly use uh, like third party tools here, right? For campaign automation, campaign management, and bit automation. So uh, like we 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 work with searchads.com a lot, and we are happy with them. We recently started working with Split Metrics by Acquire. Uh, so they simply uh, you're you're able to like automize your bids and like your entire campaign management through those third party tools, which uh, minimizes the human error uh, for sure. So, yeah. And I think I, I, uh, I lean pretty heavily for uh, companies that have a larger portfolio. Um, I use um, the search ads, search ads.com mm -hmm. from mobile action. I, I find that, that uh, that there's some some features there that are, are really nice for the reporting, but also for the um, setting up automation. Like some of the automation just makes it, it much easier. So that's right. That's right. Yeah, that so, makes sense. And uh, I, I just like to to add here that uh, we do have like we don't uh, at conversion we do not provide currently this auto bidding and campaign management uh, tools. We're only providing attribution tools. But uh, the good thing about it is that we're doing the server side receipt validation, so specifically for subscription apps, we're able to show them very accurate uh, revenue for cohorts. So it's, uh, they can track uh, the performance over longer periods of time than uh, on other platforms. But of course, there are the right number, number of tools and probably you should consider using several tools uh, to, to be on top of your Mm, Apple, uh, Apple search as uh, user acquisition. Um, I, I know what, I think I know what Simona is going to say to this, this question, but um, I'm really interested to hear from you, Guillaume, what, how you manage localization and how you pri prioritize um, app, uh, Apple search ads uh, localization or just different, different markets. Oh, that's a good question. So I think Apple Search Ads is really uh, the platform to uh, identify the, the the geo that you want to localize towards. Uh, simply, it's it's there. There's no like creative uh, workload. You you can simply find like handful of keywords, like maybe five, ten, like twenty keywords localized for sure. Uh, 
uh, and start bidding on them in, in the entire like world, not the entire world, the, the ones that Apple Search has available for sure. But so take a look at the performance, CPI, and whatever you are targeting towards, let's say free trial. Uh, if you are getting a decent number of free trials with a affordable cost, and if your LTV is really high on those um, countries from the data that you collect through Apple Search Ads, I think those are the countries that you should be localizing for. Uh, that, that's that's simply our approach. Do you find it less competitive and easier, or than than say some of the some of the bigger markets? Uh, in in what regards? Well, I, I uh, are there any markets which are surprising to you that you run Apple search ads and you kind of feel like you can um, outbid? Uh, competitors and you can really win keywords I that see. are important to the to the app versus the, the the U.S. market, you know, which is very competitive. Um, yeah. Same thing with kind of European markets. Uh, I think it depends on the app and the vertical, Ryan. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, so you have to give the shot. There's not there's nothing like no silver bullet here. You have to give the shot. For example, if, if like for English keywords, you I think you should be definitely giving a shot for like Canada, UK, Australia, maybe Ireland. Uh, so uh, for like French, you can try Belgium, like France. Uh, for Spanish, you can like try uh, like Portuguese, like Mexico, Spain. Uh, so if you if you have like one localization, for example, and you you uh, make a Spanish keyword research, you can give the shot all those. Spanish-speaking countries, not only Spain, just to collect data, just to collect, just to take a look at the LTVs of those users. For example, like if you're if if you do, if you don't run any paid ads in Spain, for example, you are not able to collect LTV data, right? Because no user is coming from Spain. But the moment you the moment you start bidding on Apple Search ads in Spain, you will receive users and you will be able to collect LTV data from those users as well as the the unit cost of the user. That way, you can make a gauge of uh, of the of the ROAS and go, take it from there. Simona, okay. Anything to add? Yeah, uh, Ryan knows that, but I'm coming from Apple Store, um, uh, uh, App Store optimization part, and my approach is a little bit different. And uh, firstly. Um, I'm starting with the like keyword research for localizations from ASO part. Let's say up to right? They have a, a nice article about cross localization, and this is relies to what Jihan mentioned. So let's take all the Spanish um, uh, speaking countries as Latin America, um, Spain, uh, uh, US, yes, right. So I'm doing the keyword research. Uh, if I'm seeing that I have keywords which are um, uh, nice to have from organic perspective, they, they are not doing well, um, but they are absolutely beneficial to us and the competitors are having a better rankings uh, with those keywords. Obviously, we'll do a little bit push with uh, Apple search ads. And then um, uh, with the course localization help, um, we will push the rest of the um, countries to the same language to reach the maximum result. It's easy win, uh, but at the same time, it's cost effective and uh, it helps for organic as well. Okay. Um, on the subject of creatives, uh, Leo is asking if you have any recommendations for creatives, like are there any things that are kind of must haves or anything that you always try to incorporate in the uh, in, in creatives. Can I start with that? Um, sure. It's a really good question. Um, and this question kind of, kind of reminded me the presentation from Apple about um, the screenshots, how it should look like. Uh, they were saying that, uh, yeah, the must is uh, the 50% of the whole screenshot, uh, the, the amount of the um, words should take particular uh, space. And then they were showing examples uh, of how the screenshot should look like. And the first thing I saw it, like they are showing three screenshots and two of those doesn't have an app UI and all the background images. So um, 
recommendations would be read the guidelines, but doesn't don't rely on that for sure. Test it, and then you'll know what performs the best for your product. There is no perfect golden rule uh, what should be uh, in the creatives. Uh, you need to test it, and you will know the best. That's that's exactly right. One thing that I, I, I uh, and just speaking with other people, I'm always surprised at how little time uh, people spend in the store looking through screenshots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to remember that users are just like you and I, and, you know, we're the, we're the same. And, um, and so if something really stands out that somebody else is doing, then create a swipe file of all of these screenshots. And that way you have your reference. I know that there's other websites that you can go to, which also uh, collect screenshots. All of those are very, very good. Um, but um, I think in order to really understand the screenshots that are going to work the best, you have to be a student of the store um, mm -hmm. and, and go in and look at app pages all the time. That's right. Uh, and I can add one thing here. So um, I think Ryan mentioned a really important thing uh, that users are spending really uh, like a, a few seconds to to make a decision on on to download the app or not they're only like uh, wandering ar around a few seconds in the product page so within that perspective we found that social proofs are really work well uh, and then, but again it's sim similar to what Simona told we have to test it out anyway uh, what social proof is that if like you can simply highlight and display your media coverage in the screenshots, especially in the cover screen in the first slot, you can mention the number of downloads your app received, number of ratings, uh, maybe some of the quotes from your users, some of the important metrics like to um, to convey the value prop your app provides, the main value prop. Uh, the, the, the benefit of the user. So if, if, and I think like testing those social proofs out will, will really be beneficial for, for apps. Uh, that's, that's what we find out recently. Like social proofs do work. And uh, can I drop in here with a question to Jihan? Uh, we have discussed you know, previously uh, that you have some internal metric for, for uh, these uh, ratings, right? Can you uh, tell a little bit about this one? Yes, for sure. So from an ASO perspective, um, ratings uh, is, is one of the most important uh, metrics for, uh, for keyword ranking algorithm of Apple, uh, along with the install velocity. So in the rating program, we have two layers. Number one is the rating velocity, meaning that the number of ratings you receive on an ongoing basis. And number two is the average stars for sure. So you have to receive like a decent number of ratings on an ongoing basis with a high stars. This is the, I think the one of the like rule of thumb in, in, in ASO. And we came up with this new metric called uh, rating per install rate meaning that from every install you receive uh, some percentage needs need, need to like leave uh, rating so uh, in our in our like feeling that's there's no like rule of thumb here but this is our experience like if you have a 5% rating per install rate you're a really good job you're doing a good job from a rating program perspective if you are above 5% meaning that every 100 installs will leave five ratings <clears throat> on an ongoing basis. Uh, if you're above 5%, you're really good. If you're 10%, you're like awesome. But if you're below 5%, you have to you have to improve your rating program. If you're like 1%, if you're below 1%, you're, you're really shitty. You have to do something to improve your rating program. It's really negatively impacts your uh, keyword ranking, uh, your ASO program. So, and, and within that perspective, you have to work with your product team, your, your uh, like uh, life cycle marketing them on wh whoever they are to decide the frequency of the rating prompt within the app. You have to prompt the user in the right time with the right frequency. Uh, it, 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 it has to be in the sweet spot, meaning that uh, the user has, the user uh, should be completed its 
uh, work or job, right? If it doesn't have, it shouldn't be in the middle of a job, of 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 a, of a, of a process. So we have to find that sweet spot, and with the right frequency, with the right messaging for sure, I think you're you can receive like high number of ratings with high stars. And in terms of stars, uh, I think like anything above like four point seven or five is is decent. If you are below that, you have to think about how to how to decrease the low ratings and increase the high ratings. Maybe there's a problem in your product. You have to think about that. Too. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we got time to, uh, to, to, to go for just a, a couple more questions. I, I, I think there is some, some questions around, uh, UA and this is always a, a hot topic. Um, Jenny was just kind of asking like, what are the, the latest trends for user acquisition? Um, and just how does that like fit into, um, the, the, the funnel? And I know that, um, yeah, we don't have much time, but I mean, how do you, how do you see, uh, Apple search ads in, in, in user acquisition as a, as a channel compared to, to other channels, if you're able to disclose that. Uh, I will let Sonoma, uh, Simona to, to, to talk about this maybe. Sure. Um, so Apple search ads as native ads network for um, Apple, right? Where you're listing this space. I believe it's a good thing uh, and it's improving. So um, again, this is my point of view, but you need to try it. Uh, you need to test it and you need to optimize it based on your test and do the recycling and start it again. And uh, yeah, it's a life of, of cycle, right? Where you do all of the things all the time and you keep improving and uh, I believe it should work. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a supporter of that. Yeah, I, I'm, I definitely agree with that. It's, 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 a, it's a demand capturing platform. You're simply capturing a demand. Uh, whereas on, in a, on Instagram, you're simply uh, targeting for interest. So, uh, like, if, if a user has a has a demand, if if they are searching for something, they want to download something, right? They are uh, they are searching for solution. So, in in right that moment, you are showing your ads through Apple Search Ads. So, I think it's it's extremely valuable. It's extremely important for apps. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think definitely uh, worth testing out uh, the Apple Search Ads uh, as, as 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 a UA channel. Yeah, I don't think that it's uh for, for me it's not an either or. Do I do I put budget towards this or put budget toward that? Like you have to do ASA and that's mm -hmm. a mid funnel strategy, but you can't ignore the top of the funnel because without feeding the top of the funnel, nobody's going to see your ASA ads anyway. So, I think that um yeah, yeah you have to bring right. more people to, yeah, to to the app page. That's um, right. We did, there is a mention, I, I know we kind of forgot, speaking about data, we forgot about MMPs and, and they, they do, how important they are. They are, um, you know, obviously they're um, a lot of great integrations and they do provide a lot of data there. Um, and uh, I think this is the last one, Michael, if we have time, but just like, uh, I think this is, is for Jihan. How do you approach um, collecting reviews? Like, uh, how do you test the different stage to ask a, a user for a review? Uh, so here at Shiftup, we're we're not we're not managing the, the the ratings and the reviews. We only give feedback to our clients, Ryan. We have best practices for sure, but uh, for sure the, the 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 person that we are working within the app, the company knows much better that knows the product much better than we do. So, but we do pre brainstorming sessions with our clients and do some like do, do discussions and make decisions together simply. Yeah, I agree. That's that's oftentimes that's a product and UX issue um, more yes, so right. than a, than a uh, an, an ASO or, or mm -hmm. organic marketing. Mm -hmm. I think, Michael. I think that we we got through all the questions. I don't, I don't think there's any other questions. Actually, actually, you see, there are two uh, uh, two ways to ask questions on this platform. There is also Q and A uh, section oh. on the right. 
and there is one uh, question there. Some some people uh, send questions to different different chats, uh, and the question here I think is uh, actually regarding my comment on spending less uh, before the holidays. So the question asks uh, to elaborate on this uh, on this suggestion to to spend less when large companies are spending more, but. What I actually meant here is not to spend less during the holidays, but spend probably spend less before the holidays unless you are a large brand because large brands, they try to accelerate their sales before the holidays. Like if we're talking about Christmas, I think like uh, first half of December is where a lot of budget uh, being spent and you don't, if you are like medium sized app, if you are very conscious about your budget, then you probably should be avoiding spending too much during this time and actually increase the budget during the holidays. Uh, so uh, uh, you, uh, the user here, Xenia, she is asking uh, whether they should be spending during the holidays. Definitely, I think from, from what we see with our clients, this, this is a good strategy. And and there is just one more uh, question there on uh, ROI tools for search ads and keyword levels. Of course, I can recommend using conversion for, for that one. And uh, of course, we mentioned some other platforms. There are platforms for uh, search ads automation. There are uh, standard MMPs to, to track attribution uh, for different channels like Aspire and Just. And we do have integrations uh, with those platforms as well, by the way. So you can send accurate subscription data to those uh, platforms to have accurate cohort revenue data there. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. I think we have answered all the questions. I think we have uh, pretty much covered all the topics that we wanted uh, to cover. Uh, and I just want to thank you guys for joining us, uh, for sharing your expertise. It was super interesting to hear your uh, your advice, your your expert knowledge on this topic of uh, search ads. I'm sure that search ads will continue growing and those apps who are not yet leveraging this for user acquisition should definitely look uh, Apple search ads and start experimenting with it and see that it can be valuable and effective user acquisition channel. If you have anything else to add guys, uh, please, please go ahead. So uh, thank, thank you all for joining. I hope we'll have uh, some more discussions on user acquisition and uh, search ads uh, among others. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks uh, for having us. Yeah, have a, have a great day. Bye. Thanks so much. Thanks.